hi guys welcome to pixel affair it's Kobe here so today's video is actually a request i got from instagram from a follower right and he was asking if i could do something like this so let me actually go on instagram and you can see he's asking if um, i could look at this video which he sent me and he was asking if i could do the first um slice effect with the moving mesh so let's actually watch the video he's talking about so i click on this so this is the video um he's talking about the first slice of this particular video done by abstr um to i don't know the name but this particular um effect that he's talking about right so let's um go into cinema 4d so when i saw this two things actually came to my mind and the first one was Voronoi fracture and that's basically what i used in this particular scenario but it wasn't as straightforward like i thought it was going to be and then there was another um idea that came to my mind which i was also showing this video after the, i've shown how i did this right but that one had a bit of issue so let's actually get into cinema 4d and see how we will use the Voronoi fracture to set up this and use another technique to also try something like this which has a little bit but it can be useful in some probably cases right so let's get into cinema 4d so i have a new scene open here and i'm using cinema 4d 20 uh, r26 but you can actually do this i think in cinema 4d r20 upwards so let's go ahead and create our mesh that we want to um, use so i'll come in here and i'll create a sphere i'll select the sphere and change the type from standard to icosahedron so that we get um, evenly segmented sphere so let's change the display to garage shading so that we see you see you have enough as uh, uh, evenly segmented right let's increase the segment to maybe something maybe 60 will be fine in this case and also i don't like the work plane so i'll come into my filters and i'll uncheck work plane right now let's create two copies of the sphere again so i'll hold control click and drag right hold control click and drag and i'll move something like this i'll make this one even smaller a bit right and also move this one maybe somewhere here you can make this one too smaller a bit um right depending on how you want your mesh basically right so yeah i think something like this is fine so now i come into my uh, volumes and i create a volume builder select the three spheres and make it a chart of the volume builder which you can actually find here volume builder right and now i'll select the volume builder um, i mean come in the volume again create a volume measure make the volume builder a chart of the volume mesh and you can see we have um, them created you can select the volume builder in the sphere like the spheres which has been added in here in the attribute you can select it and add blend so that it blends a bit more if you want so that's basically uh mesh created right so now i'll come into my deformers and i'll create a display deformer make it a child of the volume measure select the deformer and come into the shading tab i'll change it um click on this one to choose noise you can see we have noise affecting our um volume measure so let's click on the thumbnail here and let's increase the global scale to something like maybe 900 right and also add like a bit of animation speed like um, one so if we hit play you can see our mesh is moving so let's select the displacer again and come to the object tab and let's increase the the displacement the height to something like 40 which i think should be fine in this case so now we have our mesh um that we are going to use so the next part is going to create our volume um voronoi fracture so i come into my mo graph menu in here and i'll create a voronoi fracture and I'll make my volume measure a child of the Voronoi fracture. And you can see it's fracturing our volume um, measure, right? But we don't want to use the point that the volume measure is generating automatically. So let's select the volume, uh, Voronoi fracture, come to the source, and let's delete this point that it's generating. We want to create our own point to uh, slice this particular volume measure. So all I'll do is come into my more graph menu and I'll create a matrix object. I'll set the count to um, one on the X and Y on the uh, one on the Z, and let's increase the Y to something like maybe 80 because of the tutorial, so that it runs a bit faster, right? You can see we've created uh, 80 matrices, right? And also let's reduce the the space interval to something like three, and I think something like this will be fine, right? And now let's select the Voronoi fracture, the source. Let's drag and drop in the matrix. And you can see it's slicing our objects if we hit play you can see it's everything is fine um it's 
running slow it's because i'm um recording right but it's actually should be very fast when you don't have anything um running behind or at the background on your pc so now let's let me actually reduce this one to maybe 50. this to right and let's increase this one to maybe five so that you get the idea so everything is playing um like you can see we have our mesh sliced so let's select the Voronoi fracture first of all um let's also i don't like um now we are good with the um segments so i'll come to display now change the girl shading without the lines and also come to the object tab of the Voronoi fra fracture i don't like the colorized um fragments so now we have this and it's sliced so how do we get it to separate themselves from each, in the, uh, each other in here you can see offset fragment you can increase it um to something like one let's see you can see now we have our object sliced right and if this is what you probably you are doing something um this is what you want you are basically done but if you see the uh, the video that i showed where is it let me go to my window and picture viewer right you can see it's not like it's straight it's like an extruded um planes or something like that it's not having that curvature and that bend you can see in here it's sliced but then it has this um let me bring back the segment you can see it doesn't look um straight up. i don't know how to describe it but basically it's not exactly the same look as what i did um in the video i showed right so you can see it slides but it has these bends at the edges right and they having that smooth but if there's something you want then you are it's cool you can go ahead with it but if you want exactly what i did in the video then that's where it get tricky but i found a way to work around it so to do that um i'll actually increase the offset fragment to something let's increase it to the point where we this one like the whole thing disappears so let's set it to two and see still so it's there so let's go three it disappears so now let's reduce it uh, to like 2.4 and you can see now the slides are quite thin so let's we want it to be as thin as possible so i hold alt and be clicking this to in increase it like reduce the increment uh increments to 0 0.01 you can see it keeps reducing we want it to get to the barest minimum so 2.49 is the barest minimum it can go right and now um, we are cool with it so this is what we have and if you hit play you can see everything is working fine but now we want it to sort of extrude it or be thicker and all to do that all i have to do is select the vulnerable fracture come to my um, effectors and i'll choose plane effector you can see it's moving um my object i don't want it to move actually i don't want it to move but i want it to scale it so i'll select the plane effect i come to my parameters and i uncheck position and rather what i want is i want it to scale up so i'll check scale and want to scale it on the y so let's increase the scale on the y and let's increase it massively right to something like um 100 and now you can see you have a slice now this one looks right it doesn't have that bent curvature and everything so that's basically the idea of how like how i basically did this thing right and somehow it's a bit parametric so let me increase this one to maybe 150 right and if i hit play it's it runs fast as well i'm like i said it's because i'm running that's why um it's sort of lagging in a bit but it's really fast when you don't have anything running at the background so that's basically how i created this right another issue was like how to get a bit of bevel in here and that one i was struggling to do it with geometry so what i did was in the rendering i'll actually show that one at the end all right so basically i've created this thing all right and it's a bit parametric so if i want more slides i can simply select this and instead of per step i'll actually reduce the mode of our matrix to something like an um, endpoint so that everything that we create will be within the bounds of um the length of the matrix that we've set so now let's increase the number of count of our matrix to something like uh, 80 
or in fact let's even go 100 all right and i can see when you went 100 the whole thing has disappeared and that's because in the voronoi fracture we have to make sure the offset fragment is also reduced right so now let's reduce it to the point where it comes back again something like this okay so something like this and you can see now it's coming back it's showing so now let's select our plane effector and also reduce the y scale a bit more um to maybe um 100 let's see or maybe 50 can go even smaller 20 you can see now um let's make it 10 something like this or oh, 15. so it's somehow a bit parametric like i said so you can play around with it to get what you think works for you so this is basically how i i did this right so that's one part of this this um done using voronoi fracture and the plane effector to um to scale it up and stuff like that let me also quickly add that with the voronoi fracture when it comes to the offset fragment you can even go so for instance let me first of all this um disable the plane you can even go further than like just the 1.19 1. Uh, you can even go way further so if i get closer i can actually select this and make it go at like 0.5 you know can go way further so you can actually go to point let's say nine right and you can see it still works so let's actually see two two is fine so you can actually push it to the point where you see you think it works so point, uh, 1.4 disappears so let's go 1.3 right um i mean not 1.1.3 here and now let's reduce it hold alt to click on this arrows to bring it back where we, it shows something like yeah 1.23 and now if you think you still want to go we can actually go ahead and see if you can increase this one 1.235 and you can see it gets even way thinner thinner in here so you can actually add um, extra uh, decimal to it to get it as thin as you want and now if i enable the plane you can see now the plane the 15 is small so i have to increase it more to maybe like 100 right or 150 right you see so that's basically um something i quickly had to add to this um whole um, using the voronoi fracture um the offset fragment of the voronoi fracture now also um to get the rounding you basically have to make sure that um, your volume measure reduce the voxel size to like maybe one or two to get it as smooth as possible so that your meshes also look very rounded and very clean this one it's just to demonstrate so i don't increase um uh, i didn't increase the voxel size in here now the next is i'll also i'll go ahead and copy the volume measure again edit copy and create a new scene and that one i used boolean so i'll create bring the volume measure and you can see if i hit play the same thing we have our displays and everything now the next idea i go was to use planes so i'll come in here and i'll create a plane make it a bit um thicker uh, bigger like something like that and now i'll create more graph clones and i'll make the plane a child of the clone let's reduce set this one to one by one and let's increase the height of the um the number of counts on the y reduce this one to something like um five let's increase it again so something like this is fine let's set it to like 40 in fact let's reduce it because like i'm rendering um, recording let's set it to 30 and also select the plane and increase the height so that yeah something like this is fine so now that i have this tool all i was thinking was to come in here and i'll create a boolean and i'll put the volume measure and the clone the child make it a child of the boolean select the bool and change the boolean type from a subtract b to a intersect b right and you can see now it's slicing our mesh right but the issue i was having was i don't know why let's change the display to grab i don't ideally it doesn't make sense but ideally you shouldn't be having this extra um, um polygons right but it was happening when the boolean is set to um high quality right so now 
I don't know, maybe there's a way around. If someone knows, can let me know in the comment section. But when I uncheck the high quality mesh, and you can see, let's change the display to the normal grout shade. And you can see now we have our object sliced like that, right? And it's also working. Another, let's actually create some material so that we see what's going on. I'll come in here and create um, new material, apply it to the Boolean, and let's add a bit of um, noise so that we see um, what's happening. Yeah, so 50. So something like this. So you can see we have um, a slice like with the Boolean, using the Boolean as well. And this one too, because like I'm recording, it looks a bit slower, but when the Boolean is set to, um, the high quality mesh is unchecked, high quality is unchecked it's quite it runs quite faster but the downside with this is that the mesh is really really bad if i change back you can see the mesh is really really bad so it's quite tricky but then if some it's something that you think you can use so all i have to do in this case is now put the boolean in um let's come in here to say um a cloud surface right and if you are using my 4 the 2023.2, you probably can use that taken. So I'll put it in the cloud surface, select the cloud surface and set the subdivision to zero. And now let's increase the thickness to something like um, M4 or however you want it, like three. And now you can see we have a similar setup, right? Now, like the downside, like I said with this one is the mesh is really bad. So, um, if it's something that you want, then you can go ahead with it, right? So if you want it smoother, so after everything was done, now you can actually go ahead into your volume measure and now smoothen your mesh. So I can select the volume builder and reduce the voxel size to something like maybe two. And now that one will give you a proper smooth, um, like cut, right? In this case. So that's basically the whole technique of how I set up those two um, like videos. So you can see now this one is quite smooth and it's giving us these smooth edges, right? So let's actually go into the original scene that I created. So I'll come into my um, video here. And now this is the original scene um, that I actually created. Let's apply this to the scene. Yeah. So this is the original one I created, right? And it's the same formula, everything. You can see we have Voronoi fracture with displacement, volume measure, everything. And now we are using the matrix as well and the plane to scale it. So that's basically what I did and now. I rendered this. Now rendering it, one thing I want to talk about rendering is that if I double click on the um, material, redshift material, edit material, um, shader graph, you can see I added RS round corners so that it gives the edges some sort of um, rounding, right? So that it gives the edges um, a bit rounding and smoothing it. That's basically one thing I added, which I wanted to talk about. So I added the RS uh, round corners to the bump input so that it gives us the rounding edges. So basically that's how I did those two um, set up. And I hope um, this video was useful and you've learned something or one or two techniques from this particular video. Um, if you have any question, you can ask me on my Instagram, in my Instagram DM or in the comment section. All right. And thank you for watching and kindly subscribe to the video um, if you enjoy it. See you in the next one.